Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Depth Camera Central Volume 33. Today it's my privilege to bring you a new technology by Luxonix. It's called Depth AI. Now this is a complete ecosystem of custom firmware, software, hardware, and AI training initiatives on this platform that are built specifically around the Intel Myriad X. And it combines depth perception via disparity. There's no class one laser here, a left and right side stereo side imagers, object detection via neural inference AI machine learning models, and object tracking that gives you a powerful device in a very small form factor with an open and exposed Python API which allows engineers around the world to simply plug and play this SOM with any of their proof of concepts because it's open source. It's really amazing. Now first I'd like to say thank you to Brandon Giles for being so supportive and amazing at Luxonics. He sent me all these products. They have submitted a plethora of different open source experiments that they've been devising and testing and I'll do my best to show you some of those today. But let's dive into some of the technology, what I think that makes this so amazing. And when you look at an all-in-one solution, so so when we, we, we kind of review depth cameras across the entire spectrum, mainly what we're doing is we have, for example, an Intel uh, D435i, and then we, we would need some kind of a compute stick uh, on device like a, a Jetson Nano or, or a neural compute stick or you know the Amazon Coral USB stick uh, and then you would also need like a Raspberry Pi and all of those things together tend to significantly slow down the computation on the device and what this is doing which to me is amazing is taking all the hardware and software for all of these different uh, designs and then it's implementing and unleashing the power of the Myriad X within this design via AI training and it's just it enables engineers all over the world and in various different kinds of vertical markets to leverage these prototypes and integrate them very quickly and that's always a big struggle for us when we're designing new types of systems again because we never want to create something from scratch and what they have done initially here is integrate the, the Intel Myriad X which in my opinion is amazing it has an enhanced vision accelerator suite that is capable of processing dual 720 uh, uh, depth block feeds at the same time and, and it's amazing. It has 16 high performance shave cores. I think it's around 900 billion calculations per second on that hardware accelerator, and that's fantastic. And you can definitely see it here. So, when you see this example here, there's no lasers running out. This is running on a simple neural net, and it's, a, it's running on a 20 class object detector. And it's giving me the, the X, Y, and Z in meters here. And, and it's obviously seeing me as a human, but that's incredible. I've been, I'll show you some of the many other examples as we go through some. Of these systems moving down but the neural inference on this is looking at object detection image classification including two-stage so for example if you're doing basketball or sports or golf you could essentially track one person and then track another person you could show their depth and then you could show their tracks in real time uh, you know using that stereo depth via disparity I'll show you that after but you can also do localization with 3d objects like augmenting 2d object detectors with 3d position in space that's what you see here on this example uh, which is really amazing and the camera system for this particular system is the Oak D will have a left and right side uh, stereo imager I think it's 1280 by 720 now that is global shutter and the the 4k camera will be 12 megapixels for still and 4k on the video and all this acceleration all the hardware acceleration for the neural inference the disparity depth the 3d projection edge detection and feature tracking is all done on the myriad X right and then it's unloaded to the CPU so what that means is is all the vision depth and AI processing is completed on the Myriad X before it's sent over, for example, like a Raspberry Pi. 
right? And what that does is it increases the available CPU and GPU uh, computational systems for your algorithms. And there's some examples they have on their website that showcase the, the improvements um, in, in latency, uh, which is, in my opinion, one of the one of the biggest reasons to integrate this new t uh, technology into your proof of concepts, okay? And I'm gonna show you a lot of different examples today, uh, again, because they, 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 they've essentially unleashed a huge experimental library on this system. But what I also wanna show you is the different kinds of systems that they have. They have a Raspberry Compute Module Edition, which has a built-in Raspberry Compute Compute Module and integrated cameras. They have an RPI hat edition, a USB 3 edition here, um, and then they have a stereo pair, so you can just split those out. This is designed for engineers to, to rapidly integrate different types of camera systems you know, from one uh, platform, one ecosystem. So instead of going out and buying three different systems to integrate into one box, this is all integrated into one complete ecosystem, which is really amazing. And ArduCam is offering a variety of lenses and M12 mounting options and increases the field of view, different imaging sensors for the depth AI, and they're going to be releasing their own versions of the depth AI system, uh, which is really amazing for productization um, and implementation for engineers all the way across the world, okay? But I also want to look at the support initiative for this, for this system because because they were actually able to launch this via Kickstarter eight months ago. Look how far they've come in that time. It is fantastic. It's, it's extraordinary. And I salute them. I mean, this is this is an amazing accomplishment by a team, and they are fantastic. If you look at a lot of the, the Python examples in the code, again, because this is where I teach myself, right? This is how you iterate very quickly. This is how you accelerate your foundational skill sets. They, that's what they've done. They provided you a ton of different use cases, you know, across the entire spectrum and to include health and safety. And I think there's another, there's a great example about food processing, uh, using depth AI to accurately get the volume and weight of produce without costly and error prone mechanical weight sensors. So think of all the different applications and implementations that you could use optical weighing via machine learning AI inference models, and you can increase the speed of the line and by, while significantly lowering the cost uh, of these kinds of systems by just supplementing the data of, of basically full volumetric information. So it's extreme granularity and, and I, I come back to what Elon Musk is talking about with LiDAR and laser systems and now I'm starting to really understand the full breadth of what he's talking about essentially is that in the future, maybe even in the near future, because of these neural compute engines, these CNNs, these, these neural inference models, they're going to be so amazing and they're re really right around the corner. This is exceptional. You will not need uh, LiDAR light imaging detection and ranging or illumination or flood emitters. Uh, you know, basically 850 nanometer vertical capture surface emitting lasers because the computational engine itself will allow you to understand via computer vision what kind of variations there are in color and shape and objects and it's going to provide an algorithmic solution to all of these different uh, scenarios and that's something that if we look at manufacturing and I think that's a big deal uh, all the way across the board where you're 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 looking at deviations on, on human inspection and quality control and mitigating interventions for safety initiatives and this system can automatically look at different products and say okay yeah that's brittle uh, that one that one meets specification by three millimeters throw that one out we need to look at this in real time the dimensions and size and shape and mass doing automatic inspections, uh, you know, simultaneously providing real-time quantifiable uh, metrics and insights to the business. That's amazing. And I, <laughs> I could keep going down the line of mining and autonomous agriculture and various other things that they discuss here, but really at the end of the day, what makes this so amazing is, is the reduction in frame rates, the increase um, in, in computational efficiency, the decrease in latency and depth detection and depth calculation, and the reduction of shuffling data between the depth camera, the CPU, and multiple USD devices, and then the neural inference device, right? So. We don't want to put all that information on the CPU or the GPU because it'll just run very, very slowly on that AI inference model. You know, essentially an example would be 8 frames per second up to 30 frames per second, which is what you see here. You'd get 30 frames per second on this device for you know, all the integrations with an Intel D435 and a, and, a, and a Jetson Nano and a Raspberry Pi, it might be at 5 to 8. So that's a significant difference uh, all the way across the board. And it's not just a problem. Now you have a solution to it. And, and that, to, that to me is, is logic and it's using reason. And as engineers, that's what we want to base our ideology on, okay?
So again, this, <coughs> this product is designed for productization, but I'm gonna show you a bunch of examples now. Thank you so much. Hello and welcome back. It wouldn't be much of a depth camera video if I didn't discuss binocular disparity, interpupillary distance, rolling shutter, and global shutter, and camera-based systems. How exciting. So that's what you see right here is a representation of a 3D image from two 2D images on the left and right side stereo images on the Oak D. Now, we're using the same type of uh, methodology here. We're taking the difference and horizontal separation between the cameras, like camera one and camera two, we're taking that those two uh, you know dimensions and coordinates and they're representing and projecting them into 3d um, it, it, and it and it provides a parallax uh, type effect now traditionally which is really amazing our eyes do the same thing we, we take 2d images via your retina and we convert them into 3d um, and this is doing the same thing for stereo based cameras so like the z2 very similar to this but it doesn't have AI built into it now um, how amazing is that and we'll keep we'll keep diving into that uh, the more we go, but uh, this is that's what this is doing. So it's taking the the difference in coordinates of the similar features of the two different stereo camera images and, and producing a 3D effect here. And, and each uh, one of these pixels will have depth, which I showed previously um, and earlier in this uh, educational volume. Okay, so let's talk about global shutter and rolling shutter. Now, the 4K camera on this system, 4K 30 frames per second, is incredible. I think it does 12 megapixels still 4K video. Uh, but it does not have global shutter. Um, it has rolling shutter. Uh, the stereo side imagers, 1280 by 720, do have global shutter. Now this decision is, you know, made because of the cost of the device to keep it, you know, within a range, uh, you know, where there's a return on investment for all parties involved. And for the designers, they want to keep it within a certain, you know, budgetary constraints. In the future, I'm absolutely certain that they're going to integrate global shutter into that camera. Uh, on the front, uh, you know, I think the concern is it's going to cause motion blur, right? And that's because these image sensors uh, allow all of the pixels of global shutter uh, to accumulate uh, a charge with the exposure starting and ending at the same time, and it's read out simultaneously. Now, rolling shutter, conversely, right, um, they do not expose all the pixels at the same time. Instead, they expose those pixels row by row by row, each starting and, and stopping in a different time frame. Right, so essentially the, the top row of the pixel array is the first to expose, reading out the pixel data followed by the second, third, and so on and so forth, right? So each of the rows start and end, and they have a delay as the sensor's read out. And what this causes in fast moving objects is a motion blur. Um, and, and when you're doing machine learning algorithms, AI inference models on these systems, that's the last thing you wanna see is a motion blur. I've done some testing over the last few days. I have not seen a significant amount of motion blur. If I do, I will absolutely showcase it. I think they would like to hear that kind of feedback, you know. But as of right now, this this system um, is extraordinary and, and on and on many different levels. And I'll and I'll continue to dive in to the code and the examples um, and all the resources they have provided, uh, and then share that with you to the best of my ability. Thank you so much. Let's keep going. It wouldn't be much of a depth camera video if I didn't include some kind of a point cloud projection. And that's what you see here. These are part of the examples. This is open source code. So as soon as you get this device, you can download all the dependencies and libraries and start running with this device right away. And it's simply amazing. Let's jump to the next example. Here's another example of an excellent uh, 3D triangulation using Pi game. Uh, so it's just looking at facial recognition features on my face and tracking them in real time. And this is very useful for various different implementations, but obviously for surveillance and security is the first and foremost thing that comes to mind. And again, this does not have a laser, right? So this is using a neural inference model to track various points on my face, uh, you know, interpupillary distance. Uh, there, there, there is an algorithm from your chin to your head. This is how we can identify people when they're wearing face masks. And in certain types of security incidences. So this is a great example for you and it's also provided as a proof of concept right in the experiment uh, uh, folder. So let's keep going. Hello and welcome to the end of my first educational volume on the Luxonix product line. I will be reviewing several of their iterations to include the Raspberry Pi uh, product. Hopefully I'll be receiving that in the next few weeks. So thank you uh, always for tuning into this channel. I hope you learned a little something new about their new type of platform and ecosystem. Now this last example you see here is, is more of a, uh, an example on tracking for athletic competitions. You can also use it 
for social distancing and various other implementations. You can kind of see very similar to the Z2 as you're moving around. And again, you can use multiple stage inference models to track bodies in real time for sports. So soccer, basketball, football, golf, all the way across the entire spectrum. You can track multiple entities and people, different depth fields, and then you can overlay object detection. It's an amazing product. Uh, and again, I would rate this at my highest level uh, and to include because of the support, the expertise, and the energy and passion they put into this, this product line. So thank you always for tuning in to this channel. Please subscribe below and always let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day. Hello everyone and welcome to the end of the Luxonix Depth AI Educational Volume. I did want to showcase to you some of the structure uh, of, the, of the code and the system, but I also wanted to review something very briefly that I missed earlier, was that this system will actually run on any OpenCV uh, supported platform. So essentially Linux, Ubuntu, Raspbian, Mac, and Windows, and they also have an SBI variant coming out very soon. So any microcontroller with an SBI will be able to completely function 100% uh, with uh, the Depth AI platform. So it's really amazing and I believe they also have a variant with an onboard ESB32 under development and a power over Ethernet variant as well. Both will be open source. It's really incredible. Let's jump into the code really quick. There's two, just one example actually. I think I'll show you in the experiments. Um, but essentially we'll just change here AI um, and then we'll go EX and boom and LS. So these are all the different applications that come uh, you know, with the platform, you can download it. You can just uh, essentially, you know, get clone it to your device. Um, and essentially, from here, you have the gaze estimation, different demos. You also have the uh, point cloud projection RGB that will overlay an RGB on the, from the point cloud. Um, you can do some people counters, people trackers. They have uh, social distancing. That was an app I showed you earlier. So if more than one person comes into you know contact with you within six feet, it'll just give you some warnings. It's kind of cool. Again, it's just looking at that stereo inferencing model. Um, they have a triangulation 3D visualizer, two stage inference model, and a WLS filler, and a bunch of bunch of uh, uh, information that's also very supportive. Uh, for any engineer who's out there who's interested in this technology. And they have many other people who are also developing and open sourcing their code right now. So it's really exciting. I wanted to say thank you uh, so much for tuning into this channel. I hope this helped you in some way in some of your initiatives, your proof of concepts, your application, you know, uh, uh, imaginations, uh, you know, as you attempt to kind of take this technology and then, uh, you know, pull it into your pipeline of your product development. Thank you so much.